Are you a student taking a class where the teacher or professor isn't that great at using Zoom? Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Finio, here with Mr. Moose, Mr. Googles, and Moana, and in this video, I'll show you a few things that some teachers may not be aware of about Zoom that you can point out politely to help the class run more smoothly. So, first with the big disclaimer that most teachers are trying their best in a very difficult situation right now. They may have been thrown into teaching online with little or no training on using Zoom, so rather than approaching this in a critical manner, it's much better to just send some, some polite feedback and say, hey, here's this feature about Zoom that I learned about that I think we should try using in class, instead of being mean about it. With that being said, let's jump right into the features. Number one, the mute all button. This can be a critically important button in a large class where people are not remembering to mute themselves. So this can be a problem if you have younger students who are all talking over each other, or you have people with lots of background noise that's distracting. Many times teachers will ask people to just mute themselves and be responsible for that on their own. But if you have people who just aren't complying, then the host of the meeting can actually forcibly mute everyone. And again, some teachers might just not know that this control exists. So they can access it by going down to the participants button at the bottom. If they click on that, the right hand side of their screen is going to give them a list of all of the participants in the meeting. And at the bottom of that participants list, there is a mute all button. So if the teacher clicks that, it will give them a little pop up to confirm. Yes, they want to mute everyone. It will also give them a checkbox to allow participants to unmute themselves. So if they do still want students to be able to unmute themselves to ask a question, they can leave that box checked. If they don't want people to be able to unmute themselves, they can uncheck that box. Then when they hit yes, everybody else will be muted and stay muted. So again, if your class is having trouble where there's just always somebody who forgets to mute their microphone or a lot of people just aren't doing it, you can point out to the teacher that they can mute everyone. Next is the spotlight video feature. So in a lot of the comments on my other tutorial videos, I will get questions either from students who are having trouble seeing their teacher or from a teacher wondering how they can make sure their students can see them. They can do that by right clicking themselves and selecting spotlight video. That will move everybody else into speaker view, which is when you have a big view of one person instead of the little views of everybody and it will keep it locked on them even if somebody else talks. So you don't have to tell your students that they all need to pin the teacher's video individually. That's another option where you can right click somebody and select pin. But if the teacher says that, then every single student has to do that on their own. Pinning a video for one person doesn't pin the video for anybody else. So it is much easier if the teacher just remembers to spotlight their own video and that will make sure everyone can see the teacher. Now, you don't have to just spotlight the meeting host. For example, if you have students who are giving presentations, then you can also spotlight students. For example, if Moana was giving a presentation, I can right-click on Moana to add spotlight video. Now, you can spotlight two people, two or more people at once. So in that case, I have myself and Moana spotlighted. If I want to remove the spotlight from me and just have Moana's presentation, I would right-click myself, select Cancel the Spotlight Video, and now we could just be watching one student give a presentation. But again, if you have a group presentation, you can spotlight multiple students at once by right clicking and selecting spotlight video. Number three is what Zoom calls the nonverbal feedback feature. So if you click on the participants button at the bottom of the screen, as a student, you will see you have a bunch of buttons here like yes, no, go slower, go faster. And the meeting host doesn't have it, but students also have a raise hand button here. So it can be very difficult as a teacher when you are teaching to just a grid of students on your screen to notice when somebody has a question, maybe they have their hand physically raised on their camera, but you can't see it. Or normally if you would ask a yes or no question and ask people to just kind of nod their heads, yes or no, especially if you can't see all of the students or if some people don't have their cameras on, it can be very difficult to keep track of that. So you can encourage teachers to use this nonverbal feedback feature instead where every student can do something like click the yes or no button and that will give a little check mark or an X next to their name depending on what they clicked and the teacher will actually see a tally or a total of how many people have clicked what. So how many people have clicked yes. You see down here I have one person on no right now. If I switch that to yes, it says one person has clicked yes. So if you have just a simple yes, no question in a class of say 30 students, it could show you, oh, who understands this? And if 20 students say no and only 10 say yes, then you would know that maybe you need to re-explain that. So if your teacher's having trouble seeing when people are raising their hand or getting that sense of feedback for whether or not people understand things, 
This is a good option. They just need to, again, pull up that participants window on their screen. Then they'll see the list of everyone's names here along with these check marks or the raise hand icon if someone has a question. Number four, breakout rooms. This is something that allows you to address one of the major problems with teaching online, because when you are teaching in a physical classroom, it's pretty easy to pose a question and say, okay, turn and talk to the person next to you. Or maybe in elementary or middle schools, you'll have students seated at tables where there's four or six students seated around a table, and that makes group work much easier. That's really hard to do online. You can't just have all 30 or 100 students talking over each other in the main Zoom meeting. That is what breakout rooms are for. So breakout rooms are a little more complicated to run. I have an entirely separate tutorial video about them, which you can find a link in the description below this video. But the basic idea is that the teacher clicks this breakout room button. They can select about how many rooms they want. So for example, if you had a class of 30 students and you wanted students to work in groups of three, you would tell it you want 10 rooms total because 30 divided by 10 is three and you hit the Create Rooms button, and Zoom will then send all of those students into their own little individual meeting where they can talk to each other without hearing everybody else. The teacher can then give them a certain amount of time to have that little group discussion, and then pull everybody back into the main meeting. So it kind of recreates this idea of students sitting at separate tables and groups and being able to talk to each other in those smaller groups without hearing the whole class. It's not perfect. Again, there are some details you have to pay attention to when you're running it, which is why I have a separate video about that. But if you normally did have those types of discussions in your class and you haven't been able to do it since going online, then pointing out breakout rooms to your teacher could be a good option. Number five, and hopefully this isn't an issue, but if it is, there are ways to deal with disruptive students in Zoom. So if you have somebody who isn't muting their microphone and you would rather not mute the entire class or someone who's showing something inappropriate on their camera or somebody who somehow got into the Zoom meeting who shouldn't be there, there are a variety of controls available to the host to deal with that. A simple one to mute individual people, you can just right click on them and mute them individually instead of muting that entire class with the mute all button. You can also stop video for individual participants. So if somebody is constantly making silly faces and distracting the other students, you know, even if it's funny and the teacher has asked them to stop, you can right click someone and click stop video for them. That will turn their video off and just show their name. If someone is being really disruptive and you actually need to remove them from the class, kind of the equivalent of sending them to a timeout or the principal's office or something, you can do that by right clicking on them and two options here, put in waiting room, that kind of puts them in a little separate room of their own outside the meeting, but doesn't totally kick them out. So that's maybe kind of like the school equivalent of making somebody go sit in the hallway or the timeout chair or something. So you can then readmit them from the waiting room if you want. So you could say, oh, I'm going to make you go sit in the waiting room by yourself for five minutes until you calm down or something, and then let them back in. Removing them from the meeting entirely kicks them out, and then they would need to re-click the Zoom link to actually rejoin the meeting. You can see in this pop-up window, it means he will actually not be able to rejoin the meeting. So that is kicking someone out for good. I do believe that is a setting you can adjust in your Zoom settings where there is an option that will let people come back in. But by default, if you kick them out like that, then they can't get back in at all. If the class is getting Zoom bombed, meaning the link to the class got posted online somewhere and you have lots of people joining who shouldn't be, they can lock the meeting completely by going down here to this security button and clicking lock meeting, that will prevent any new people from joining the meeting until they can get things under control. So I hope you found this helpful. Again, if you're a student watching this video and your teacher doesn't know about the mute all button or spotlight video or one of those things, don't be rude about it. Your teacher's probably doing their best. You can just politely point that feature out in an email or in the chat or in a discussion after class or something. And if you yourself are new to using Zoom and you have other questions, again, there is a link to a playlist in the description below this video with a whole bunch of other Zoom tutorials. If you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, please leave a comment below this video. Thank you.